Shohei Otani has allegedly been the victim of theft. Up to four and a half million dollars, sources say. And that is at the hands of his interpreter, Ipe Marhuzara. Now here's the full article I'm going to read to you now by Teresa Thompson of ESPN, who broke the story and actually did an interview on site in Seoul with Ipe. L.A. Dodgers interpreter for Shohei Otani was fired Wednesday afternoon after questions surrounding at least $4.5 million in wire transfers sent from Otani's bank account to a bookmaking operation set off a series of events. Ipe, the longtime friend and interpreter of Otani, incurred the gambling debts to a Southern California bookmaker operation that is under federal investigation, multiple sources told ESPN. Initially, a spokesman for Otani told ESPN the slugger had transferred the funds to cover Marhazara's gambling debt. The spokesman presented Ipe, so Otani's spokesman presented his interpreter and said, here, talk to Ipe, the interpreter, to ESPN. So willingly, Otani's camp said, here, talk to the guy who's involved in this. Here's free range of total you know, cooperation and disclosure of the legitimate original source, the guy who's the story's about, and here you go, talk to the guy, and that's what they did. They sat down with him for 90 minutes on Tuesday night, during which Ipe laid out his account in great detail. However, as ESPN prepared to publish this thing, on Wednesday, the spokesman of Otani's camp, quote-unquote, disavowed what he said and said Otani's lawyers would issue a statement instead. So initially, Otani's representatives, his camp, so to speak, said, here, talk to Ipe, you know, he'll tell you the whole spiel, don't ask Otani, Otani's not really involved, just talk to the guy who's making the bets and is in the debt. Okay, cool. ESPN's like, sweet, you know, direct source, awesome. We love direct sources in journalism. He got the account, and he told him what he told him, and they're going to run the story. And then, obviously, either ESPN ran the story by Otani's camp and lawyers first before publishing it, and then they said, look at that, nah, you know what, uh, this is not good enough. We're, we're going to get the lawyers involved. Don't, don't say what he said, because basically, we don't like what he said. Or scenario two is that they didn't, consult or read the initial story being Otani's lawyers, and they got cold feet and just said, I don't care what the guy said. I don't care if he said Otani's an angel. Don't run the story. We want the lawyers involved first. So that's pretty interesting. So then when they retracted the story, Otani's lawyers in camp, they said, quote, in the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that Shohei has been a victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to authorities, read the statement from Burke Bredeler, Otani's lawyer and attorney. His spokesman declined to answer any further questions, and the statement did not specify whom they believe perpetrated the alleged theft. This is speculation, but this is how I think that kind of part went down. Basically, Otani's camp was like, don't talk to Otani, he has no idea what's going on, he's a victim of circumstance, talk to this guy, he needs to focus on the game. Talk to his interpreter, you know, probably better because he can speak English, and just talk to him because, A, and, you know, he's the thief and, and, and the suspect, so to speak. He's a guy who can speak English really well. Talk to this guy. So that's what they did. And then they heard it, and they're like, nah, you know what? Whatever he said, we don't like what he said because he probably threw Shohei Otani under the bus at some point in this statement that he originally said on Wednesday, or excuse me, on Tuesday night. The developments this week came as a federal investigators are examining the operation run by Southern California bookmaker Matthew Boyer. The wire transfer payments were sent from Otani's account to an associate of Boyer's, according to multiple sources and bank data reviewed by ESPN. Multiple sources, including Ipe, told ESPN that Otani does not gamble, and that the funds were to cover his own losses, being ePays. ESPN did review the, the uh, bank statements and the bank information, and it showed that Otani's name was on two $500,000 payments sent in September and October. Because here's the thing, and this is what we'll get to in a second, but you would think, okay, he's an interpreter. He's making like $300,000, $500,000 a year being ePay. That's pretty good money, but, you know, it's not Otani money. And over the course of pretty much just a year, he incurred up to $4.5 million in debt, allegedly. Could be more, could be less. But if you're, like, an illegal bookmaker, I mean, who would, like, I'm just saying, if I'm running this thing, 
Who would let somebody incur over nearly $5 million in debt? Like, unless you're you're a, a, an actual athlete, which seems is what the Boyer guy was under the impression that Otani was making the bets, and perhaps that's why he let Ipe incur, you know, $4.5 in debt, because he didn't think it was Ipe, you know, placing the bets for himself. It was for Otani, and Ipe was the middleman, you know? So that, see, that's where it gets really, really um, skewed and, and foggy. Is, is it like, because I'm just saying, the fact that he let Ipe get four and a half million in debt, that's just, that's just bad business, whether legal or not. I mean, that's just stupid. Okay, so that, I don't understand that. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical on how Otani is exactly involved in this thing. Sources close to the gambling operation told ESPN that Boyer dealt directly with Ipe, who placed bets on international soccer matches and other sports, but not baseball. Now, he does say this multiple times in his statement to ESPN, I believe the first time and the second time on Wednesday. Uh, starting in 2021, a source said Boyer was aware of the name on the wire transfer, but chose not to ask any questions as long as the payments came in. He doesn't give a <laughs> As long as he's getting his money, doesn't matter. However, the source has said Boyer allowed people to believe that Otani was a client or to boost business. See, that's the thing, is that Otani's name had to be on it. For number one, like I just said, no way in hell are you letting some interpreter who's, yeah, he's making good money, but not Shohei Otani money, rack up 4.5 in debt. Okay, that's just not happening. Secondly, even if he did think it was the interpreter, where did the guy think he's getting this money from? So obviously the interpreter was, I mean, excuse me, the the bookmaker, Boyer, was under the impression that it was Otani, and that's where it gets murky. Now, Boyer's attorney, Daniel Bass, told ESPN that the bookmaker never met or spoke with Shohei Otani. But regardless, you don't need to, because again... You're, you're assuming that he pays the middleman here, whether it's for himself or for Otani. It doesn't matter to the guy. All he cares about is getting his money. Now, he says, Ipe, obviously Otani wasn't happy about it and said he would help me out to make sure I'd never do this again. He decided to pay it off for me. He says, I want everyone to know Shohei had zero involvement in betting. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting ever again. Um, but on Wednesday afternoon, Marhazara told ESPN that Otani had no knowledge of his gambling debts. And Otani had not transferred money to the bookmaker's associate. Okay, so that, that I think that the first quote right there on the top about Otani wasn't happy with him, you know, incurring this debt. And then the second quote where on Wednesday he said he had no knowledge, that's where it's fogged. Because, wait a second, you're saying in one, in, one, in one statement that, which I believe was on Tuesday, that, you know, he wasn't happy that I incurred, you know, this much debt, but he's willing to help me out. But then the next day he says, well, you know, he didn't really know that I had debt or he didn't really know I was gambling or had a problem. So, and he didn't have any involvement in transferring the money to the bookmaker. So either he pays line to cover up Otani, or he pays somehow hacked Otani's account, or had access to it, whether willingly or unwillingly from Otani's standpoint. So that's just, that's that's the weird thing here. This is kind of confusing. I can see why this is confusing the shit out of people. And, and look, here it is right here, like I said a moment ago. He confirmed that he has been being paid between $300,000 and $500,000 annually for being... Otani's interpreter. That's where I don't understand why the bookie would allow this guy to grow that much in debt when he's making between 300 and 500 grand. Um, so I, I don't know, but this is odd. I, I, it's really hard for me to, to kind of un unravel this thing. Now, here, now here's the interesting thing that people don't people don't really understand and need to with this story. MLB players and employees are allowed to bet on sports other than baseball, but not with illegal bookmakers or offshore websites. Okay. Now, the illegal bookmakers thing, pretty much, that, that that's a red flag because that's exactly what, you know, Ipe did. Now, if he was making bets for Otani via DraftKings, um, I, I, I don't understand what an offshore website is really um, categorized as. And maybe someone in the comments could help me out with that one. Is DraftKings and all those apps you see consider offshore websites, or is that like, you know, like the uh, dark web or something? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to pretend that I do. Again, MLB players can make bets with other on other sports. 
not just, not baseball, but any other sport. Which Mahar Zahar said that you know he he he. Let, let's take it for what he said was the truth. Well, I, I didn't make any bets on baseball. I just made bets on, on other sports, NFL, NBA, college, whatever. If he just did that through legal and, 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 and lawful gambling sites and casinos or whatever, then everything would be fine right now. This would not be a story. But the fact that it was a, with a legal book in California, that's what makes this bad. Otani could walk into a casino right now and make a bet on the L.A. Kings or the L.A. Rams or who the hell ever and be okay. He can't do it through an illegal bookie. But he can walk into a casino and do it, that's for damn sure. That's what you have to understand. So it's not like players can't bet at all on anything. So that's important to note. Baseball has not been contacted by federal authorities and was not aware of the situation until ESPN raised it in the recent days. So this is exclusively ESPN. Since officials from the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Central District of California declined to comment, in addition to Boyer's bookmaking associate also declined to comment. Uh, two sources said neither Otani nor Ipe has been contacted by federal authorities. So that's a good thing, but again, this is a federal investigation ongoing with the FBI. This is a bigger thing. It's not just Otani. This is a, this is a gambling ring. This is, could involve multiple different individuals. Could be other pro athletes. Who knows? But this is not just Otani specifically. Now, Boyer could be facing felony charges. His home was raided by authorities in October. According to a search warrant involuntarily obtained by ESPN, agents seized cash, casino chips, banking documents, and money counting machine, multiple computers, portable storage, storage devices, and cell phones from Boyer's estate. Ipe said, quote, I'm terrible at gambling. Never going to do it again. Never want any money. <laughs> I mean, that just sucks. Um, I mean, I drug myself into a hole and it kept getting bigger. And it meant I had to bet bigger to get out of it and just keep on losing. It's like a snowball effect. Now, after Otani agreed to pay the debts, Ipe said on Tuesday, Otani logged into his own computer and sent the wire transfers under his supervision in installments over several months last year. So this is not a one-time thing. This is over several months. That's why they mentioned that document shows Shoyo Otani made two payments of $500,000. They also added that loan was the description used in the transaction. When asked why Otani simply didn't give him the money instead of paying Boyer's associate directly, Ipe said that Otani did not trust him with the money, which which makes sense. It does from a friend and comrade and standpoint. Like, you know, you kind of know your buddy like, yeah, he might just gamble us away if he's going to actually pay it off. I just want to get it directly to the guy that he owes and then just be done with it instead of him incurring more debt and coming back to me again at a later date. So I guess at the time it made sense, but, it, but it's not an excuse for what Otani did or what Ipe did or whatever. I understand where it, you know at the at the Pacific time and place this probably occurred. What Otani's thought process was when it came to covering for his good friend. Um, so I understand that, but still, I mean, not the smartest move by either one of them. But you know, it's more on Ipe than Otani here. I have to say. Now, when an ESPN reporter asked Otani's camp about the allegation from Ipe that Otani was present, his help moved the funds and was going to be paid back. The spokesman contacted Otani's attorneys, who then issued the statement saying Otani was a victim of a massive theft. See, that's what I'm saying. Ipe did the initial interview, and Otani's camp said, hey, talk to the interpreter. It's his deal, not Otani's. Ipe said what he said. Obviously, Otani's camp, his representatives, his attorneys, saw the clip, saw the interview, read the interview, and said, mm, that's not what we wanted to hear, Ipe. You know what? We can't trust you, so we're just going to say, don't use this, don't run this story, do not quote a damn word from this guy. We'll get our attorneys on it, and we'll get back to you. What, what, what they wanted to do was they didn't want Otani's name and fingerprints to be on this one bit, despite it sadly being so. And they said, don't talk to Otani. It's not his debt. It's not his situation. He's not the one gambling. He doesn't know Boyer. Talk to Ipe. It's his problem. It's his money. It's his debt. It's his life. Talk to Ipe. And they did. And then Ipe probably threw out Otani's name once or twice. And 
the, the, the Atani camp, the attorneys didn't like it, and they said, wait a minute, hold up, don't run that. We're going to give you our own statement and save Otani's ass from this guy, the interpreter. Not, I wouldn't say he's trying to throw him under the bus, but obviously he did not word it in a way that Otani's attorneys was comfortable being public and that going public. So that's what I think. He says, obviously, this is all my fault. Everything I've done, I'm, re I'm ready to face all the consequences. And then, but he, again, he reiterated that he never bet on baseballs. Okay, you know, this is the thing about the Dodgers. I understand they're trying to save his ass. The Dodgers are, MLB is, trust me, they do not want this guy getting suspended. Manford doesn't want to do it. The Dodgers don't want to do it. Pete Rose is salivating right now, but because <laughs> if, if he doesn't get suspended, Pete Rose belongs in the Hall of Fame. I'm just saying. But I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm just saying that it's in the best intention for everybody involved. The Dodgers, MLB, the fans, Otani himself, Ipe, that Otani does not get suspended. But there is a deep irony about this, and the Dodgers are a hypocritical franchise if they do not do this. And I'll tell you what they have to do. They have to put Shohei Otani on paid administrative leave. Why? Because that's what they did with Trevor Bauer. They did it with Trevor Bauer with no evidence at the time. They blackballed him from baseball. Even after it was found out he was innocent, they did not, re they did not bring him back. They did not recruit him back. At bare minimum, the Dodgers need to put Shohei Otani on paid administrative leave. That's if you don't. And that's all I'm saying.